Battlefield 1's Apocalypse DLC is being revealed, and alongside the Battle of Caporetto and the Battle of Passchendaele, we have perhaps the most infamous battle of World War One, the Battle of the Somme. Now, this map follows in the same path as Caporetto in employing the Conquest Assault Game Mode variant rather than using Standard Conquest, and I think that is a good move in general. It gives a better representation of what actually happened at the Somme, with the British pushing through and trying to capture as much land and key points as possible. Now, doing that from a single starting point and slowly pushing through the map, capturing key areas, obviously the flag points, on paper sounds to be like a good gameplay experience. But I think this map has some glaring issues and it needs some big improvements. Now, it is worth me mentioning at this point, the map is work in progress and everything you see here is subject to change. But all of my opinions have been formed in playing this map in its current iteration. Firstly then, let's give you a good map overview. I'll bring up the spawn screen, and you can see here that the British start on the left side of the map, and it's their objective to make their way through the map and capture the six flags that the map possesses. Now, as they make their way into the map, obviously the Germans could flank them, take one of the flags back, and everything starts moving in a more conquest-like way. But to begin with, it's almost an instant assault on that A flag. Now, the A flag is a small outbuilding, and it's a yard surrounded by these tall grasses, which I assume are in place to cover the advance of the soldiers across what is almost completely flat ground. And we know how that ends. If the defending team are smart, which they were in the playtest, all of them will spawn at the A point, and they will pin the British back almost instantly. Now, this might be a good representation of what happened at the Somme, with the British being held back and not capturing the land that they thought they would, but that's not a great experience for a video game. Now, of course, the grass is only visual cover, and it's absolutely no help whatsoever when the bullets of machine guns just start carving their way through. Now, smoke would be an answer to provide further visual cover of your advance, but considering the map starts all 32 British soldiers from one point with no other option to spawn anywhere else, it's like a turkey shoot for the Germans. The map doesn't support aerial combat either, so there's no way to sort of take a bomber or a plane full of other players to drop those passengers at a further away capture point so they can capture it and give the team another spawn location. Everyone starts at the HQ, and all three rounds that I played on the Somme started with a huge fight at the A flag, with the British being slaughtered. And that theme of far too little cover isn't only restricted to the A flag, it continues throughout the entire map. Now the B and C flags, I will say, are fairly well designed being connected by an extensive trench network, giving the team holding those flags plenty of cover, and if one team holds one flag and one team holds another, it creates some nice battles down there in the trenches. But if the British are trying to attack across the river to either B or C, then they're in full view of those trenches that are held at the time by the Germans. All they have to do is sit in the trenches, bipod up their LMGs or look down the scopes of their sniper rifles and they're just going to have fun at basically target practice. I'm just a bit mystified as to how no one looked to the map and said, do you know what, I think we need some more cover because it's clear that nobody looked at the map that way, because there is next to no cover that the British can use. The D flag as well, that has a similar issue. Now, there is a trench network that connects the D flag to the B and C flags, but above the trenches that lead to it, it is literally an open field. Again, this might be what the Somme looked like at the start of the battle during World War I, but... Here in a video game over a hundred years later, looking to try and offer players a good gameplay experience, that's not going to cut it. It's literally an open field from D down to F, which is a group of houses near a train track. Between that, there is a slope between D and F, and it's completely open. You can just look from one flag to the other, and you can see everybody moving around. Now, there is one saving grace for the British here. They get access to tanks. At their HQ, they are given two tanks to roll forwards with, 
and if they're used properly and not completely focused on by the Germans, then the British can make a good start onto the map and then push forwards. The tanks are huge distractions for the Germans, who are simply looking out for the infantry in the wheat fields, waiting for them to emerge so they can just be mowed down. Now if the tanks can take enough of the attention, then the British infantry can move in and capture A point and then push on from there. But honestly, the presence of just two tanks I don't think is really enough. There still needs to be some proper cover implemented across the map that infantry can use. There's, there's literally none in that first field apart from the wheat and that's not going to help you at all. I'm not saying the cover needs to be solid or destructible, it doesn't need to be buildings, but we just need some more cover there, something that doesn't make it so easy for the Germans to see everything that's going on. What about those hay bales that DICE added to the French DLC? I think there's loads of them on the map Soissons. They'd fit quite well and add some extra cover in the middle of all these fields, which infantry could use as a quick resting point. Maybe they want to stop so that somebody tracking them isn't able to continue tracking them all the time. You've stopped behind cover. Or maybe you could even use that cover if you needed to quickly reload in the middle of a gunfight. There are lots of different options that the developers could take here. It's just there's quite a lot of things that need changing on this map at the moment that I'm not sure where they're going to start. The bit that I mentioned between B and C is in a good position, A is in a really bad position and needs more cover, D definitely needs more cover, and E and F at the back of the map, they're okay as well. But again, the British need to get there first of all before they can start having gunfights in that location, and to be honest, I only had one or two in the three rounds that I played, and therefore I can't really comment if that area of the map is really good enough or not. Now, I don't really have a huge amount more to say about this map at the moment. Perhaps I'm being overly harsh though, and potentially expecting too much, considering this map is still in development, and is a good two months away from being finished up and shipped off into the main game. But I think in expressing these clear issues nice and early on, it gives the team all the data and feedback that they need to transform this map into something better. Potentially adding some aerial combat might improve gameplay and give the ability of both teams to contest more of the map. As I mentioned at the start, having planes would allow passengers to paradrop out onto enemy objectives and then capture them, giving the entire team another proper spawn point if they're stuck somewhere else on the map. Maybe adding some light transport vehicles as well. Motorbikes might be really good to get some speed up and close the gap on enemies that are advancing a little bit faster. I'm not sure, but one thing I'm really concerned about at the moment is the lack of cover. And that does need addressing one way or another. So there you are then, the Somme. It could be a great map, but at the moment it really isn't a great map. I think it's severely lacking in comparison to a map like Passchendaele that is already fully fleshed out with plenty of solid, destructible and soft cover, and of course undulating terrain to break those lines of sight. It feels like the map really could be behind in terms of development, that might be the case, but regardless, it does need some work. Thank you very much for watching today, let me know what you think of the map down below, and any other thoughts you might have, drop me a comment today. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.